one video that I want to watch first and then we'll get to that. We'll watch some of that. Let's see. Fuck was I gonna say? There we go. Alright, so here we go, man. Let's settle the fucking poll with our boy Dreamcast guy. An objective source for all things gaming, news, reviews, and discussion. Oh wait, no, fuck. That's young, yeah. But never mind. Let's go ahead and check this shit out. I have a feeling that the comment section is going to be very controversial this time around, but let's discuss discuss the idea of God of War versus Elden Ring, because right now we are coming up on the end of 2022 and the discussion of Game of the Oscar Rodriguez with a two random ass question. How does cabbage soup sound? Mm, pretty bad. I don't know. What else is in it other than fucking cabbage? Here is already beginning to bubble up because, I mean, let's face it, this has been a very epic year for video games. We've had big driving simulators, epic first-person shooters like the new Call of Duty actually not sucking, everybody really enjoying freaking Sonic the Hedgehog again. But what's really kind of been the focus is a lot of people pitting against Elden Ring versus God of War. Who wins the award of Game of the Year? And I wanted to weigh in because I am somebody that has played these games multiple times now, and I really do love both, but it's time to try and compare them and contrast them. What's up, Gavers? Dreamcast guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great Oski will ask you with a two how much you want to bet Elden Ring doesn't make Game of the... I would not be surprised if they didn't pick it at the Game Awards, but I think it'll win Player's Choice, personally. Day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, I am going to be actually giving away a copy of the Super Ultimate Collector's Edition of God of War Ragnarok over on my Twitter account tomorrow on Saturday, which will be 11-12. Go follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. It's going to be a lot of fun, so go check that out. Now, in order to just properly discuss this, I do want to be clear. I love both of these games a lot. I think they're both 10 out of 10 experiences. I've reviewed both. Dude, can we just appreciate how drippy Dreamcast guy's shirt is? It's covered in pussy shoving shit into their fucking mouth. Done huge deep dives on the ideas of the stories, the themes, the combat. I think that whether you own a PlayStation and have played God of War or decided to play something like Elden Ring on your Steam Deck, you're not losing. Both of these games are truly masterpieces that have some of the most well crafted experiences that we've seen in maybe years. I mean, straight up, I do think we're going to be talking about this stuff and really tearing into them for maybe the next decade. Now, part of what inspired this video is because the Game of the Year Awards, which is done by Jeff Keighley, the nominees are going to be revealed on Monday. And what's kind of funny to me is that already the entire talks of this are centered on Ragnarok or Elden Ring. And as much as I loved something like Horizon Forbidden West, it's already kind of been forgotten. Now, I say this as somebody that very much enjoyed Forbidden West. When I reviewed it, I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. My biggest downside to it is that the story is definitely a step down, whereas Ragnarok is, in my opinion, a big step up from God of War 2018. Looking at the Metacritics, I feel like reflects this. You can see that Elden Ring here is a 96 on Metacritic, and God of War Ragnarok here is a 94 on Metacritic. Both of these games, it's just insane to think about this. This is seriously some of the highest rated games of all time. Even looking at past Game of the Year award winners, typically on Metacritic, they're hovering around like a 92 or something like that. So, oh my god. These games truly have managed to stand above the rest. Because Metacritic scores are so important. I saw there with the five, this Game of the Year award is akin to the older God of War when it went against Red Dead Redemption 2. I prefer God of War, but wouldn't mind either one. Yeah, honestly, though, I would have given that shit to Red Dead Redemption 2 because I feel like Red Dead Redemption 2 was like a genre-defining game. God of War did not define a genre. I think it just... I can't afford 
reinvented a franchise, but didn't necessarily make it better in all aspects. I don't know. I think Red Dead 2 was like the culmination of what gaming could be that entire generation, personally. But, you know, critics love Sony games. As a kid, nostalgia with the two Dreamcast guy cries at night every damn time. I don't know. He's got all those games to keep him company. When it comes to the conversation of specifically pitting Elden Ring versus God of War Ragnarok, I feel like the difficulty of this does come down to the stories themselves and comparing this gameplay. Because where Elden Ring shines most is in the mystery it evokes. There is not a wrong way to play Elden Ring. I like the fact that you can be a strength build and use a heavy two-hander or magic builds and just try and stagger blast people with rock throw. I have actually beaten Elden Ring 15 times. Why? I mean, I guess if you're doing New Game Plus, fine, but like, Jesus, man. I don't think I've ever played a game so much in my life other than Final Fantasy VII, which I beat every like year. It's crazy just how addictive Elden Ring is, trying different builds, doing different side quests, finding different hidden gear and figuring out which build works best. And I do think a lot of the appeal of Elden Ring that exists that Ragnarok does not have is the mystery box. Now, this is a little bit of an older concept, but it's something that was invented by J.J. Abrams, the director of a lot of different movies. Oh, God. Movies and TV shows and stuff like that. And he said that a lot of times, if you have a good mystery, then your brain will fill in the answers. It'll. The mystery was with his Star Wars movies was how the fuck did something that bad ever get fucking approved? Invent the best possible solution to the puzzle and just plug it in. And that's why when you watch his old television show Lost, it... Dude, I can 100% believe Dreamcast guy played Elden Ring 15 times. Like, Dreamcast guy is definitely that guy who just sits inside all day and plays video games. Like, I 100% believe... That that is an actual number of times he's beaten the game, even if he's just counting New Game Plus. Like, I feel like that's realistic. Asked a lot. Like, I don't think anybody can accuse Dreamcast Guy of not being a real gamer and loving video games. Like, I don't think he's guilty of lying about that at all. Of very cool questions, but it doesn't really tell you what's right or wrong. Elden Ring is the best video game mystery box. We don't know every little bit of the story. We don't know. I disagree. I think from software, a lot of their writing comes down to them just being fucking lazy. And I know that's kind of a controversial take. I don't really care. But I truly believe that the motherfuckers who make Elden Ring, Dark Souls, the story writing team never actually comes up with a complete plot. They literally just scatter a bunch of random shit all over the fucking game just to make people go fucking crazy. I don't believe there is a genuine, complete story for Elden Ring anywhere because I think they're just lazy as shit and they don't want to actually finish it. They just hope the community connects all the fucking dots for them. And that's why I think it always takes them so long to release DLC is because they're waiting for the community to come up with the story for them. Personally, but you know... I'm sure that'll be a hot take. Oh, why the two fingers exists. We don't really understand all the cryptic endings and stuff like that. And even if you watch every video and lore breakdown about Elden Ring, you cannot possibly know everything about it. But to me, that adds to the appeal. That adds to... I don't know. It pisses me off. The fact that they've never come out and like explained the story of Dark Souls, what? six years after the fucking franchise ended like fuck off give us the actual story like nobody wants to fucking be in limbo like oh i wonder what actually happened no i want to fucking know what happened tell the story don't just drop this would be like i don't know it's like literally reading a book and like chapters are fucking missing basically a lot of fucking good that does you snk nostalgia with a two it's lazy and cryptic i mean i guess i don't know I just genuinely don't believe they ever fucking write the actual story. I think they just make up a bunch of random shit, scatter it around the world, and have people go fucking crazy. To the charm that adds to that very glorious mystery. Whereas when it comes to Ragnarok, 
I love the story of God of War Ragnarok immensely. I think the best part about it is that it just so brilliantly writes and tells such a deep, evocative story about pain and fatherhood. Yeah, you shouldn't have to watch 18 different videos in two hour that are like two hours in length to somewhat understand one person's perspective of their interpretation of what the fuck is actually happening in a video game. Like, I'm just throwing that out there, bro. That's not a good story. That's literally just scattering a bunch of random shit. It's like a create-your-own-adventure novel. Like, nobody fucking wants that shit. <laughs> those, like, I don't, it's just, but even then, those have actual fucking plots. Like, I should not have to watch some random motherfucker on YouTube make 18 different videos over an hour long each to get one man's opinion on what the fuck he thinks actually fucking happened, and then at the conclusion of all of that, still have no fucking idea if he's even right or, like, wrong. Like, literally, the way they do this shit is just, like, a fucking wild goose chase that has no fucking answer because they never fucking made one in the first place hood and exhaustion and sometimes the fact that honestly regret and just dealing with the sins of your past can be a big part of your existence god of war ragnarok is seriously oh dude 100 percent destiny is very guilty of that shit like why the fuck is the story not actually in the fucking game why do you have to go read grimoire cards or whatever the fuck a game that made me i mean not to be too cheesy here i cried i i Dog, didn't he cry at the end of Stray, though? I don't know. Cried playing God of War Ragnarok because of some of the things that happened with these characters. I did a big spoiler video. I'm trying to be vague here. But it's interesting that in the debate between God of War Ragnarok versus Elden Ring, a lot of people are debating the stories instead of the gameplay. Because when it comes to the actual moment-to-moment -moment combat, I do think that both of these games are truly perfect when it comes to Elden Ring. Why do I care about FromSoft games? Because they're extremely fun, they have awesome fucking settings, they have cool bosses, and they have a world that you actually want to learn about, but unfortunately, because of the fucking storytelling that the developers do, you never actually get to fucking learn about the world. Basically. It's irritating. It's lazy. And I don't know, like, why the fuck do I want to invest all this time watching other people interpret the story of something and then not even know if it's fucking right for decades after the game comes out? Like, that's just obnoxious. I don't know. Like, it doesn't make me want to invest time in learning the story. I truly appreciate the fact that there's just so many different ways to play it. I like the fact that you can really just go and get lost and explore and try things out and right or wrong. It's fun that there is just so much customization to your personal journey. Whereas with... Ra like, perfect example, man. Like in Elden Ring, when you're fighting Radagon... Like, there's no fucking explanation in the game anywhere of how Merica and Radagon are the same fucking person. Like, is it too much to wonder, like, hey, how did this fucking happen? Oh, well, go read 85 different item descriptions and maybe you'll have some fucking semblance but still no real answer? Like, that's just lazy storytelling, man. They just straight up didn't fucking put the answer in the game. Ragnarok, I like the fact that, honestly, Kratos is just such a beast. You know, using his leviathan axe and his blades of chaos to chop people up, swapping between frost and fire, trying to unleash a special weapon ability, or calling in Atreus to, you know, use his arrows to chain stun something that's trying to eat your face. Ragnarok's combat is such a surprisingly big step above what we got in God of War 2018 that I do feel like this is part of what the conversation is going to be about. Is just because, honestly... Yeah, it tells you they're the same person, but why do they look different? Why do they do different things throughout the events of the game? Why are they basically opposed to each other at one point, then come back together? How the fuck did someone have kids with themselves? No, it says they're the same person, but there's no explanation of how that even fucking happens, or why that even fucking happens. So yeah, like I could say like, oh yeah, the fucking world exploded well how did the world explode 
what caused that to happen? What are the implications? Oh, no, it's okay. It just happened. Just accept it. You don't need to know any details around it. <laughs> like, it's just lazy. I don't know, man. That's not a, that's not storytelling. Like, you're just throwing out little fucking nuggets of info and getting people to connect lines that may not even fucking exist. When it comes to improvements, just straight up the upgrades. Like, bro, I've seen motherfuckers write college dissertation level analyses of, like, the fucking Elden Ring story. I'm like, why are you all putting this much time into a story that the fucking devs didn't even bother to fucking finish? It's like you're just running a fool's errand. Like, I feel like the Miyazaki guy's just sitting back in his office laughing at all these fucking nerds making eight-hour-long videos just breaking down this fucking lore that doesn't even fucking exist in the first place. I just, I don't know. I feel like everybody's getting fucking trolled when it comes to that type of shit. We got in the God of War series, Ragnarok is, I mean, it's just so perfect. It's just so exceedingly well done. I love the bosses and the takedowns and the crazy ripping animations when you just dismantle a dude bit by bit. I like just trying to explore these very beautiful environments and straight up try and survive the freaking realms of Midgar. Like, <laughs> even now, remembering God of War Ragnarok and my two playthroughs of it, I'm just blown away by how good every side quest feels, every unlockable feels, every new bit of the talent tree. In this way, Ragnarok does win. I still think that the storyline obviously is better, but also a lot of the side quests and stuff are just so brilliant. I love the fact that this game manages to be funny when it's trying to be funny. It's heartfelt when it's trying to be heartfelt. I mean, Kratos and Atreus and even things like Brock and Sin. The lore really isn't hard to find. Okay, answer me this simple question, man. Who stole the Rune of Death? Who is the Glomide Queen? How did Merica and Radagon, one entity, become two? What are the two fingers? Answer me those questions, and then I will believe you that the answers are out there. But you don't have the fucking answers, bro. I should cue the fucking Kanye clip, because goddamn, it's so fucking appropriate, man. Like, all these people, they're like, oh, the answers are in the game. Then why the fuck has no one found them? Ronnie stole it. No, nah, it's not Ronnie. So right there, immediately, we already have. Radagon is the split personality of America. Okay, then how did that happen? How did she have sex with herself? <laughs> how did America literally fuck herself and have kids? <laughs> like... This is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, America stole the rune. We have people saying Ronnie stole the rune. Like, point to me where it actually says that happened. Dog. Like, all I can say, bro, is... I don't want you to empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself. How fact, you did take a few steps back to go. You ain't got that. had a coherent line of events that took place. Elden Ring does not. Is anyone going to argue that fact with me? Like, you know what happened at the beginning of the Dark Souls timeline to the end of the Dark Souls timeline. Elden Ring, nobody knows what the fuck or who the fuck did what. Are we really going to argue that fact? Because Elden Ring does not have a fucking story. And motherfuckers are out here making five hour long analysis videos for no fucking point. Entry are characters that are going to stick with me forever. Whereas as much as I love 
Elden Ring. I love Godric the Grafted and honestly Rainy and just the character we create. I think that the universe of Elden Ring may be more appealing because of the question mark it leaves in our minds. But I do think that Ragnarok is probably going to stay in the conversation longer during this debate of Game of the Year. Now, honestly, I do think that part of this comes down to a concept that they call recency bias, which is that if you drop a huge AAA release in November... I don't know, man. I think a lot of people still have a hard on for Elden Ring, regardless. Sam the Madman with the two, George R. R. Martin wrote Elden Ring. No, he didn't write all of it. He just wrote, like, the overall world. I'm sure Miyazaki went through and, like, took a bunch of shit out. But I don't know the whole creative process. But, hey, that could be the problem as well. But even then, Dark Souls has massive fucking plot holes that are left unexplained. Even, what, a decade later? Which, God forbid, they actually just put out a straightforward answer on. But, you know, gotta watch those lore videos and still not have a fucking clue of what happened. And then the Game of the Year awards are in December. A lot of times the physical people that are jotting down their answers to what's the best game at the top of their brains is obviously whatever the last amazing game they played is. I do think that recency bias will play at least some part. I keep seeing articles like this one over on Push Square. Obviously, this is a PlayStation website, so they are going to be mildly biased. Now, their article is very, very spoiler-free, but they talk about the fact that, honestly, the plot twists, the things they managed to do inside of Ragnarok, I mean, from software, would never even attempt to write a story this staggeringly emotional. It does Dog, they wouldn't even bother to write a story at all. Like, these motherfuckers aren't in the business of that shit. <laughs> like, forget emotion, forget plot twists, forget any of that crap. They don't bother to write a story in the first place whatsoever. They leave that up to the fucking people who make eight-hour videos dissecting a fucking story that doesn't even exist. It does kind of feel like that there is a high level of difficulty to even talking about these games in a compare and contrast fashion because both of them are so great. I mean, they're masterpieces. As it currently stands, I think I personally enjoyed... Elden Ring a little bit more. I have 500 hours in Elden Ring. I bruh, 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 bruh. How many hours do I have in COD? 150. I'm getting up there. Own Elden Ring on every single console. I've beaten it on every single console. I beat it on my Steam Deck. I've beat it on Xbox. I did 11 playthroughs of it on PlayStation 5 and got the Platinum Trophy. I mean, like... Right now at Ragnarok, I have about 50 hours played, and I very much enjoyed that 50 hours. I think I'm going to be reflecting on it for a long time. But even now, I kind of want to create a new character in Elden Ring. <laughs> like, the, the nature of building out your own... Yeah, gameplay-based experiences are much more fun to replay than story-driven ones. There's no secret to that. Like, obviously, Elden Ring is focused on its gameplay experience, so it's going to be more fun to go back and replay it when you have different gameplay options compared to a game where every single time you play it, it's the exact same fucking thing with zero fucking options. SNK Nostalgia with a two Dreamcast guy would have been an amazing Scientologist, bruh. I don't know, man. He's too much of a gaming monk for that one. Own adventure is just so appealing. I'm kind of curious to see where the votes come down, though. I'm kind of curious just to see that in the context of the Game of the Year awards by Jeff Keighley, what is going to win. But as it currently stands, I do believe that Elden Ring still wins by like 1%. But what do you guys think? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please, keep dreaming. I'm sure this is going to be a very civil comment section. I'm very ready for it. Thanks so much for watching that video. If I you wonder if it is a else, civil comment always... section. Watching the Elden Ring lore video show me how... Interesting. Oh my god. No, he fell in the trap. I used to fall into the trap too. 
But then I woke the fuck up and realized that these lore videos are just motherfuckers talking straight up out of their fucking asshole and they have no clue what the fuck is actually going on. It's 100% just random interpretation. I don't fucking know. He fell down the rabbit hole, man. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Don't waste your fucking time. I can't eat, like, oh, what's this one channel called? It's like Smoke Town or something like that. Um, Elden Ring. This guy. Bro, I used to watch every single one of these fucking videos. Look at this shit. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 1 hour and 10 minutes, 1 hour and 10 minutes, fucking 55 minutes, 1 hour and 44 minutes, 40 minutes, 16 minutes, an hour and 30 minutes, an hour and 26 minutes, an hour and 19 minutes, an hour, fucking 38 minutes. Bro, you will watch every single one of these fucking videos and have no idea what the fuck is even happening in this game? Like, I don't know if From Software is, like, basically behind the scenes with these guys saying, like, hey, you know, we're going to give you just enough information so that you can make a fucking hour and 30 minute long video, but we want to cut to that fucking money. We want a cut of that fucking money, bro. And I guarantee you there's some sort of fucking kickback system going on where these motherfuckers who are making these movie-length episodes every single week. Like, look at this shit. There's like two weeks in between each one of these. These are movie-length videos, bro. Like, I guarantee you these things have like 800 fucking ads in them. Miyazaki's like, hell yeah, bro. We want a fucking cut of that money. Here's just enough information to get people to fucking keep watching this shit. And I think this is like basically a drug dealing racket on the fucking internet. Like these motherfuckers are in on it as well. What about Vadi Vidya? Let's see how long his videos are. Let's see how long his are. Dog, 30 minutes. I'm telling you. You will watch every single one of these videos and be like, I have no idea what the fuck is going on in Elden Ring. He hasn't uploaded that much, honestly. Damn. I thought he would have milked this game a lot more. I guess he's spreading it out. Damn, he really hasn't done much. I guess he's no longer getting that fucking From Software, you know, info dump on the back end. But I'm telling you, dude... There's got to be some sort of shit going on where they just give out enough information to these channels or point them in the right direction to say, this is what you should make a video on. But we want to cut of that fucking money. Because I guarantee you a video of this length getting 32K views. Well, what does he normally get? Like 100K views? Like a video this long with 200K views is probably making 15 bucks every thousand views. The dude's probably making bank, which, you know, respect to the guy. He's out here on the grind. I can respect the hustle. Like, it is not easy making hour and a half long fucking lore videos, I'm sure. But dog, FromSoft has to be in on this shit. <laughs> like, you can't convince me that there's not something going on here that if you watch every single one of these videos, you still don't know what the fuck actually happened in the Elden Ring timeline. But, yeah, I don't know, man. <sighs> Shit's wild. Brit with the two, Dreamcast guy, and everyone forgot Horizon Forbidden West. Yup, Horizon Forgotten West. Elden Ring basically erased that shit off the fucking map. I saw her with the two. We got time for a nine minute video. I'm um, possibly. We got to get to a Send the Blank Things video first. Nessa Kane Nostalgia with the two. Jeebus. Tit Christmas. What the fuck? <laughs> and Uncle Grandpa with the two. 80 hours in Elden Ring. I'm loving it. Fun for me. Dude, it is a fun game. But the story is just. 
non-existent. Well, I shouldn't say non-existent. It's definitely there. But just like the world. Oh my god, guys. I just did it. Reddit moment. All right. Everybody who can, spam the Reddit emojis in the chat because, dude, I just had a 500 IQ Reddit moment because I just discovered the actual meaning behind the Elden Ring story. All right. So hear me out, guys. Somewhere out there, there is the full story of Elden Ring. But just like in the events of the game, as the Elden Ring was shattered and fragments were sent out everywhere, so was the story, making it the perfect metaphor and analogy for the events of the game. Now tell me I'm fucking wrong, bro. Is that not like the biggest brained Reddit fucking moment? Oh my god, I'm gonna come to Miyazaki's infinite wisdom type shit. Like, just like the events in the game, bro, and the Elden Ring shattered, so did the fucking story, and we're only left with fragments. Oh, shit, dude. Let's fucking go. There we go. Actually, Miyazaki is a 100% genius. You know, only he could come up with a concept that fucking amazing. I was wrong, man. Elden Ring, greatest story of all fucking time. Shit, I will hold my L. There we go. There we go, man. But yeah, I'm sure I'm sure that point's already been made. I'm sure someone has already made that point. I'm not going to take the credit for that one. I just like the look at what the shit they're pushing. I asked a stranger to buy me a drink. Oh my god, she definitely didn't know you. Kittens climbed their mom. <laughs> Fuck. Uh Jesus Christ, man. Normie YouTube is interesting to look at. Like, what actual people watch, not us fucking nerds on the internet. All right, so Ascended Blank Thing, this is for you. I don't know what we're getting into. Disclaimer, everyone watching this shit. If this is, like, some absolute degenerate shit, this wasn't fucking me. When you... Like, I already know these are fucking furries. Either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. This is gonna be a real good time. Yeah, really tells us a lot about who Vincent Martin is before we even watch his video. Yeah, it does. So, should we get to it then? I think we should watch it, guys. <sighs> I'll get the booze and the neurosurgeon on standby. I'll hide the revolver for now then. Why don't you just go ahead and fucking swallow it? Just the title of the video alone annoys me. When the hell did you ever claim to be better than many a true nerd? I understand Vincent is like, Oh, hey, John said Fallout 3 is better than you think, and Kratosa said Fallout 3 isn't better than you think. I'm a copy of both. Yeah, this is incredibly stupid already. Yeah, man, it's so stupid. I never claimed to be better than many a true nerd. I just criticized his awful video and did a play on his title. It seems like an unfortunate phrasing on his part. I get what he was trying to do, but it just comes off as poor framing on his part. Like, somehow he thinks you think you are better than someone else. Just kind of a strange way to do it. Okay, now it's time to tackle Kratosis vs. Many a True Nerd. This certainly is not going to be an easy video to try to break down, but I will do my best. Also, why are you showing footage from Outer Worlds? Is this not a video about Fallout 3 and specifically your criticism of John's video on Fallout 3? Oh my god, man. Why aren't you using gameplay footage from the game being taught? Shut the fuck up. Dude, people always say this shit about me. It's like, I don't want to fucking play the dog shit games I'm talking about. As a kid, all just the two. At least our frontal lobes work, nerds. Yeah. And, you know, we don't have the tism. For it with the two, what the fuck, these guys again? Ah, uh, you can think Ascended Blank thing for this one. What the hell does Outer Worlds have to do with any of this? Outer Worlds- I don't know, man. Maybe it's because it's like the spiritual successor to Fallout. This doesn't have anything to do with either video, as neither of us bring it up in our videos. Oh my god. And it didn't even exist when John- Maybe he's just playing a fucking random game in the background while he's talking. <laughs> Whoa! I made his video, and I hadn't played it when I made my video. 
I can only assume it's being used as random generic background footage because he has nothing to fill I the space. You really felt the need to point out the fact that, oh my god, guys, he's not using the gameplay footage from the game he's talking about. Holy shit, dude. Whole, you can just tell these fuckers are homeschooled. Regular owl with the two. Oh god, one of them has an owl. <laughs> That's right, man. But don't worry. He jerks off to his. I'm hoping you don't do the same. So why not just use B-Real from Fallout 3? Uh. B-Real? There will be parts of the video that I'll be leaving out. Dude, are they really autistically spurging out over the fact of him including random fucking gameplay in the background of a video? Jesus Christ. Ow. So, I'll be leaving a link to the video in the description along with a handy dandy time counter up above that should be fairly accurate in case you want to see the bits I'm leaving out. So let's just jump right to the first section that I want to cover. It's appreciated, though not necessary, when the person links the video they're responding to and he helpfully points out he will give time codes for it in his video. It sure would be a shame, though, if he skips out on stuff that actively destroys his points. You know, since he's going to be skipping stuff. The next part of his video I'll be skipping because it's not anything that really needs any kind of response. Bro, why do they all sound the same? Me too. John basically describes how you can skip part of the game and- Oh my god, dude. They all belong on the same fucking ride to school. Fallout 1, 3, and New Vegas. After that, he describes in extensive detail how the game directs you to Megaton fairly well through the world design. It's a point I agree with, but I'm cutting it for time, as it's a fairly large section, to which my only real response is that I agree. I can't really add much to it. However, there are a couple comments he makes in that section that I am clipping to respond to. If anyone wants full context, you can just go to his video for it. Instead, most players want to find their way to Megaton, and I want to examine this initial journey in detail as it really demonstrates the level of care and craftsmanship that goes into Fallout 3's world design. While I do agree that leading the player to Megaton through world design is handled well, I have to heavily disagree with the praise for the What the fuck is even happening? level of care and craftsmanship that goes into the world design. Dude, I can't even tell what the fuck is even occurring at this point. I can't go too in-depth on that right this second, but I will absolutely refer back to this line throughout the video as I continue to respond to his arguments. Here Creed is leading the audience to believe he'll have an argument to counter many a true nerd's claim later on in the video in a rather mocking manner. It's not mocking though. Sure, later on I use it as a point of slight mockery, but right now I'm just disagreeing with the point being made and planting a little flag for people to remember it for later. Some people like to call this poison in the well. Poison in the well. Who the f- Oh my god. Dude, this is literally like- Oh my- Dude. Well, or attempting to poison the well is a type- This is infuriatingly autistic. I'll just fucking say that. ...of informal fallacy where adverse information about a target is preemptively presented to an audience with the intention of discrediting or ridiculing something that the target person is about to say. Poison the well can be a special case of argumentum ad hominem, and the term... Um, could you, uh, define the word well? I don't really understand what's being poisoned. ...term was first used with a sense by John Henry Newman in his work Apologia Pro Vita Sue. The etymology of the phrase lies in well point. Do they think this makes them look good? Oh my fucking god, man. An ancient wartime practice of pouring poison into sources of fresh water before an invading army to diminish the invading army's strength. How the fuck is that poisoning the well? Yeah, what the fuck? I suppose Vincent comes from the bizarro world where everything is backwards and Superman is a dumb villain. <laughs> well, I mean... That's kind of the world we live in right now. Remember when Superman crashed that ship into a massive city and reduced it to ashes? Great fucking hero there. Yeah, man. Actually, if he would have just crashed it into the ground, the collateral damage would have been much smaller. Shut the fuck up, dog. All because of the two RIP my last membership message? I do not see one, man. No idea. Uh, how far back did you send? 
I don't see a membership message. The last... I don't think I've gotten a... No, the last membership message I... No, shit. Nobody sent a membership message tonight. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't see one. But, uh, yeah, I got you. Groovy! <laughs> but with the two... Oh, no, so many reactions. I'm so confused now. I think they are, too. Hey, punk. Welcome to Clown World. I just like to... Yeah, welcome to Clown World, bitch. We're already fucking there. We call it kicking the can down. The second I open this fucking video up, I already arrived. On the road, because it's really more of a neutral and fun way of framing this rhetorical technique. Kick the can down the road, meaning to, <laughs> to avoid dealing with a problem, to postpone dealing with something in the hopes that it becomes someone else's problem, to leave a complicated issue for some other day. To avoid or delay making an important decision normally on a regular basis. Dude, why the fuck can't their parents just beat them and take away their computers? <laughs> SNK Nostalgia with the five months at tier one. Got you, man. Bruh. Such no. By all definition, what I did is not kicking the can down the road. In my videos, I'll sometimes say I'll be coming back to something later, but that's not a point I'm abandoning. It's something I fully intend to return to. It would be more accurate to say this is you prepping to use John's own words against him several times later on when they become appropriate in context. No, I love Megaton, and that's partly because it has great visual design. Because it's easier to get attached to a place. Either, if it's either, either subscribe, distinct. donate, For example, or get the fuck I'm out. I'm sure I know where everybody lives in Megaton and in Rivet City, but in New Vegas' Good Springs, which has a much smaller population, it was only years and multiple playthroughs later that I learned Easy Pete sleeps in the long three-room house in the middle of town. I always just assumed that was player housing. Assumed? I can't remember off the top of my head where Trudy sleeps now I think about it. I have an issue with John's comparison here. It's really <laughs> not fair to be comparing Megaton to Good Springs. That yeah, was... man. That's like totally not fair. I mean, they're obviously very fucking different, I guess. What the fuck is this shit? Would almost be as bad as comparing New Vegas to Rivet City. Oh. Yeah, dude. Obviously, Rivet City is nothing like New Vegas. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Alcuz with the big black pussy? Appreciate it, man. That's much more entertaining than this shit. Holy fuck. Also, technically, Vault 101 is sort of the first town, so to speak. Or <laughs> yeah, obviously, man. Vault 101 is stacked. Or should I say, rather, where you start the game out at. Does this guy have a grasp of English? Is it I can't afford this shit! <laughs> oh. Is it his second language or third, perhaps? It very much seems that way. After yeah. After all. Here's a link that will help you spot them when you suspense it as being used. Pro tip, if you have this bad of a grasp on the English language... Oh! Dude, he's really going after somebody for a fucking typo in their fucking descript... Oh my god. Jesus fucking Christ. Your tax dollars at work is all I'm gonna say. Maybe you don't make assumptions of a person's argument when you can barely understand it. So that might have been a better comparison to make. Not sure on that. Hang on a second. What was that about comparing New Vegas to Rivet City? And what actual issue did he have with John's comparison? He never actually said what the issue was yet. Or rather, why it was an unfair comparison. Elaboration is for pussies. Says the fucking brony. Yeah, I should... Make a ton. It's a free fucking license. It is visually distinct and totally nonsensical. Again, this is something that will have to wait just a bit longer for me to go in depth on, but what is worth responding to here is everything else. The comment about knowing where everyone lives seems a tad bit anecdotal. The general layout of Megaton is fairly well done, and I think I know where everyone lives too. However, I don't know where anyone lives in Rivet City. I can't totally agree with Gree's reaction here, at least to this, because instead of saying something like bolstering your pitch with a display of ignorance is not that great of an idea, or something else to that degree. I'm sorry, what? What is he even trying to say here? 
Bro, I'm pretty sure you make typos in your video descriptions because of autocorrect, right, Griffin? No, I just literally spam a bunch of fucking keywords in a paragraph format so I can get into the search algorithm. I honestly don't spend even more than three minutes typing my fucking, you know, descriptions. They're just there as fucking algorithm bait, so if somebody searches for a specific topic, the uh, description gets flagged and pushes it up through search results. That's kind of the strat you want to employ on YouTube is like just load your fucking description up with key terms in like a sentence format so that when people look up those things, your description gets flagged by YouTube and recommends those videos. Here. Yeah, what the fuck is he even saying? This is just total word salad. What yeah. issue does he have with my reaction? Did I... Yo, can you define what word salad means? Remember where some people in a game town live? And don't remember where people in a different game town live? Does he not understand you had a problem with Revit City's layout? It's a personal thing that varies between people, so it's not much of a point. Yeah, man, the layout of the city was just not appropriate for me. <laughs> like, oh my god. Hey, good news, guys! The neurosurgeon says acts that go against the Geneva Convention are covered free of charge for our post-video brain repair. Please fucking do it! Bro, do it. Do it. Instead of saying something like bolstering your peach with a display of- Do it, pussy. Do it. Of ignorance is not that great of an idea. I- Fuck, he put it away. Really don't get this line. It just seems like he's saying I should have said this, but John isn't claiming ignorance. The argument I just made was that this is anecdotal at best. It's talking about personal experience, and not how everyone playing the game will feel or remember it. He kicks the burden of proof down the road again, and then follows this up with a display of how pointless a observation like this is by showing he could do the same exact thing as John. And I can't see what purpose it serves besides adding, uh, you know, that sprinkle of negative framing to his video. Burden of proof. Overview. generally describes the standard that a party seeking to prove a fact in court must satisfy to have that fact legally established. There are different standards in different circumstances. Such no! How the fuck am I kicking the burden of proof down the road here? There's nothing that can actually be proven here. Again, John's claim of knowing where everyone lives is entirely anecdotal. I can't disprove that he knows this, and him knowing this is not proof of the game being well designed. Obviously. Mention, knowledge of where everyone lives is not some measuring stick used anywhere for something being well designed. There are people that can memorize lines in a movie hearing them only for the first time. That does not therefore mean those lines are well written. Hell, I what? knew someone who couldn't remember their house number as an adult when they have lived there all their life. Are you speaking from experience? You don't even know your fucking house number? Judging the quality of how well designed an area of the game is based on a single person's memory... Is I know, man. He's such a fucking cock tease. Why does he keep putting the fucking gun away? Fucking stupid. As has been thoroughly proven, especially in the courts, human memory is completely fucked. Wonderful Experiment was a group of people told to memorize a situation they were currently in while in the park. Unbeknownst to them- No one fucking cares. <laughs> oh, SNK and the Soldier with the Two, they sound like Mystery Science 3K, but really bad. <sighs> They sound like something, all right. James Hilton with the five. They made a four-hour video like this. They need, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Please do me a gigantic favor and take a long walk off a short dock. Them, a staged robbery took place, and they were then asked what the hell happened. The vast majority of them got misled by a plant in their ranks, who described a lady wearing a red coat as the victim, which never fucking happened. But the majority kept bringing it up and used her as a foundation for their memories of the incident. And I think part of that is Good Springs is just a town made up of a group of houses, and it's supposed to be interesting the comings and goings of the townsfolk when they're just walking from one building to another, as opposed to unique salvage vehicles clinging to the side of a bomb crater. Why does that make it any harder to be interested in the coming? and goings of random NPCs regardless. Aside from quest NPCs and lore dump NPCs, most of them exist just to fill up the world. Again, this is entirely subjective, but I never cared about the comings or goings of Billy Creel. 
because aside from talking to him for the first time and exhausting all of his dialogue options, there's nothing for him to do, and he holds no relevance in the world. I really hate having to kick the can down the road myself, but at least I'm not going to give it the same type of framing that greed typically does. So just keep this statement in mind for later. Ironic that the man accuses you of framing things negatively while you were noting to keep a statement in mind. Well then instantly, instantly, negatively frame your words and statements as much as possible. J'accuse! I declare you a projector. It's also funny that he seems to understand the reason behind saving something for later in response to someone, but somehow a problem when I do it. There is no actual problem with holding on to the point for later, as long as you do actually come back and use it, which is what I do in my videos. And I want to examine this initial journey in detail, as it maybe demonstrates the level of care and craftsmanship that goes into Fallout 3's world design. While I do agree that leading the player to Megaton through world design is handled well, I have to heavily disagree with the praise for the level of care and craftsmanship that goes into the world design. I can't go too in-depth on that right this second, but I will absolutely refer back to this line throughout the video as I continue to respond to his arguments. I really hate having to kick the can down the road myself, but at least I'm not going to give it the same type of framing that greed typically does. So just keep this statement in mind for later. Poison the well, or attempting to poison the well, is a type of informal fallacy or adverse information about a target is preemptively presented to an audience with the intent of discrediting or ridiculing something that the target person is about to say. So when I so beautiful, man, it really does fit perfectly. It really does. That should be their intro music, man. Fairly new. One hundred percent. This should be their intro track. Really say I'll be coming back to a phrase. That's a problem. That's poisoning the well. When Vincent Martin implies something very negative about me, it's just fine and dandy. Speaking of that, some people really bloody hate the bomb, by the way, because it's odd to build a town around a bomb. Odd is the understatement of the fucking millennium. It is not odd to build a town around a nuke. It's downright fucking stupid. Appeal to common sense argument. But appeals to common sense in a post-apocalyptic world eh, strikes me as a bit absurd. And also it's a logical fallacy, but we'll be encountering a lot, I'm thinking. You can't just claim something is a fallacy and move on. <laughs> Even if it is a fallacy, which it isn't in this case, you have to explain why it's wrong. People in the post-apocalypse will still have common sense. The difference is the common sense will be different as the daily struggles and idioms have now changed from a normal everyday America. People will know a nuclear bomb explodes and give off radiation sickness and poisoning. Not to mention, the people who settled the Megaton Crater were people who survived the fucking war in the first place. Yeah, dummy. Oh my god. Why are they applying? Dude, they're like sitting here trying to talk shit. about fucking. I can't afford this shit. They're like trying to apply real world logic to the design of a fucking town and fall. Dude, it's a fucking video. Mm. Dude, this shit is fucking beyond dumb. These motherfuckers are a special breed. An absolute fucking special breed. They know what the bombs are. They know what the bombs do. The people currently living in Megaton fucking know what the bomb can do. Appeal to common sense? Motherfucker, claiming that people surviving in the wasteland wouldn't know a nuclear bomb as a threat is in itself an appeal to stupidity fallacy. It's not like the people <laughs> living in the wasteland talk about the fucking bombs or anything or how they caused all this. It totally makes sense they would settle around a literal boogeyman they fear. We also have evidence that people know what the bomb does because a rich twat in a tower wants to set it the fuck off so he can have a nicer view. The game actively showcases that the people of Megaton are fucking retarded. Like Moira's survival quest, which showcases that she has no idea how to actually survive an apocalypse at all. How the hell are supermarkets going to have food forever that people can always scavenge? Remember...
This is your fucking social security checks at work, everyone. This is what you pay taxes for, just FYI, because I guarantee you these motherfuckers aren't working. She didn't expect the writers to be there. That was a surprise for her, and the only reason there actually was food there was because it was their own survival supplies. So unironically, she thought you could just go down to the local supermarket and get some food. This is an adult who has lived in the wasteland for at least 20 plus years. Fucking do it. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Sounds like real life imitating art. Since Creed is not done with- Dude, I wish he would imitate the fucking art that he has on screen and just fucking go through with it, man. Honestly. Quit teasing everyone. Give the people what they want to see. His take down a Megaton. I'll be kicking the can down the road again myself. I think this video is teaching me some bad habits, but best way to deal with it. And best to wait for Creed to be done with this section of John's video. Poison, poison the well, well or attempting to poison the well, is a type of informal fallacy where adverse information about the target is preemptively presented to an audience. In addition to this, it never bothered me, though, because there was a fairly sensible reason for it. Actually, there isn't. The game tries to justify it, but fails utterly, and only makes this whole scenario somehow even more stupid. As Manya describes it, a plane crashed in that location, creating the crater. Now already, this is a bit too much, as a plane wouldn't create a crater that deep. We're talking literal tons of soil being displaced as a result. My <laughs> Obviously. My question is... How deep is it? 20 feet deep? 30 feet? 40 feet? I, I mean, the depth does make all the difference, guys. I wonder if Creed did any research into this. I mean, obviously he should have opened up his fucking lore guide and gotten the answer. I didn't actually do any research into seeing how big the Megaton crater was, but I did a little bit to see real world comparisons, and given this real world comparison, a airliner with very similar specs to the crash B-29 bomber in Fallout New- <laughs> Oh my god. Please make it fucking stop. Vegas created a crater about 32 feet deep, 92 feet wide, Please and stop. 131 feet long. I didn't think anyone would make an argument this fucking pedantic. So since he couldn't be bothered to do the research... Um, can we get a, uh, definition on the word pedantic? Beyond reading a headline for an article and listing measurements he clearly doesn't comprehend... I went ahead and did the research for him. So looking into the Ethiopian airline incident, the plane in that crash was a 737. Dude, I would actually rather get my fucking crater expanded than listen to this shit. Max 8, with a length of 129 feet. Oh my god, dude. All right, fuck it. 8 inches and a wingspan of 117 feet 10 inches. The B-29 bomber has a length of 99 feet and a wingspan of 141 feet 3 inches. The 737 that crashed in Ethiopia was bigger and hit the ground at 575 miles per hour. The B-29 bomber can only reach a top speed when pushing past its limiter 365 miles per hour. Unlike Vincent, I will actually show the images of the Ethiopian crater. The result of the crater at the end of the skid line was created by an explosion that left very little scrap remaining. The plane was completely obliterated, yet the crater is significantly smaller than the Megaton crater. We even went further and measured the length, width, and depth of the Megaton crater itself to compare the two. The Megaton crater is around 293 feet 4 inches wide one way, and 320 feet the other. The depth is around 72 friends, feet we'll 7 inches. So as you can see, the crater of Megaton is fucking massive in comparison to the real world example Vincent referenced. Keep in mind, this is assuming Burke is a male average of 5 foot 10. If he is 6 foot, we have a lot more inches to add as well. 
So Benefit's Fallout 3 preferred to be shorter. Keep in mind also that Vincent's measurements in the Ethiopia crash measure from the edge of the crater all the way to the end of the skid line. This also assumes that in 2077, they were using a bomber made in World War II, which why the fuck are the Chinese using a B-29 to bomb America? Yeah, we went ahead and did the research here. Don't try to out uh. So not only is the plane he referenced not even close to the text, but every other assumption he made here was wrong. The reason I didn't measure the crater originally was because it was pretty fucking obvious to anyone with a functioning brain that a plane could not create a crater of this magnitude. In the original version of this video- I mean, obviously, bro, a crater of this magnitude could never be created by a fucking plane. Duh. Holy shit, dude. I had referenced a video of 10 tons of topsoil being dumped from a dump truck. Why? Why are you referencing a fucking dump truck? Oh my god, dude. The reason I did this was to clearly demonstrate the sheer amount of dirt needed to be displaced in order for this crater to even exist. Keep in mind, this is loose topsoil too. Not the hard compacted dirt that would actually be there. Yeah. The Ethiopian flight also exploded! So how is there a perfectly intact nuke left? Not only that, but there had to be enough scrap from the plane left oh in order my to God. build the tower. <laughs> they state, in-game, that scrap from the plane and from an airport a few miles away was used to build the town. <sighs> so significant portions of the crashed plane would need <sighs> to still be intact to even use. Since there is proof that it can happen in the real world... Oh, fuck off. I will just assume that it isn't unrealistic for something similar being completely believable in a video game. You see, there's an old video from about five years ago that discusses Fallout 3 in New Vegas called The Shandification of Fallout, which basically discusses- I just want to know why this is even a discussion, bro. What effect does this actually have on fucking Fallout 3? Does it make the game better? No. Does it make it worse? No. Does it make them look like absolute fucking spads? Yes. This is how games work better if their basic logistics have been thought through and it's obvious how basic human needs are being met. So in the case of Megaton, the city has food because the one upside of the apocalypse is that wildlife is massive now and there are plenty of mole rats right by the side of the town. First and foremost, there is absolutely nothing whatsoever in the entire game that references mole rats being a food source for Megaton. And there's nothing to support John's claim here. No one in town hunts them. No one in town herds them. There isn't even a scrap of mole rat meat in Megaton as far as I've been able to find. When I said this was a pure fabrication, I wasn't exaggerating. Yeah, man, he was dead John serious. John literally just saw that there were three entire mole rats behind the town. Yeah, dude. And concluded that they absolutely must be the town's food source based on that alone. Also... If these three mole rats are a food source, then what happens after you kill and eat them? No more food, I guess. I edited out the Jonathan Franks tell you you're wrong for 47 seconds and some of Creed's framing. So it would be simpler to break down without all the fluff of the original video. It was 16 seconds of Jonathan Franks and 10 seconds of Kratos is doing it, which would be 26 seconds, not 47. I may try to argue that this is hyperbole to emphasize a point. Fucking no. Hyperbole would be saying, I edited out Creed doing an hour of John Frank's fabrication. And what you're engaging in right now is semantic. Let me pull up the fucking definition of semantics, guys, just in case everybody here has a fucking second grade level of understanding. Like, oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Not 47 seconds, which sounds more like you actively tried to time it and fucked up. Or, you know, you just fucking lied. Oh, that possibly can't be the case. No, we don't have mountains of evidence that Vincent lies. Dog, this makes Walt Jr. look like America's next fucking rocket scientist. Dead ass. I'm putting John's statement in blue. Bro, Walt Jr. looks like a certified genius compared to these motherfuckers. You generation with a two, be careful, Griff. They might make a four-hour video. 
<laughs> oh my god, bro. Jesus. Anything but that. Ezio Skywalker with the uh, four Fallout community is a literal disease. Dude, this this is this is genuinely fucking pathetic. I don't know. Oh my god. And Abraham Zamora with the two. Did you hear about Kevin Conroy? I honestly didn't hear about him until today, but yeah, it's sad that he died, man. As again, nostalgia with the two, bro. I'm not. Wait, I'm too drunk on Johnny Walker Blue for this. Never too drunk. Drunk is the way to approach something like this. I wish I could say I was with you on that one. And James with the two. Real life logic translates so well to video. I know, man. Real life logic is wonderful in video games, right? Don't we want video games to be exactly like real life? I mean, it's almost like the whole point of playing a fucking video game is to get away from the bullshit of the real world or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, Brit with the two. All I hear are words. I don't understand them. This is beyond fucking me. The levels of, like, just tism on display is crazy. As again, the soldier with the two. In college, I personally knew people using wiki. I mean, I feel like that's pretty normal, though. A lot of people use that. You can go on Wikipedia and, like, find the sites, like, they actually source, and it's actually good information for the most part. Blue. So, in the case of Megaton, the city has food because the one upside to the apocalypse <laughs> is that wildlife is massive now. This is making the claim that the wildlife that is massive for the apocalypse, which is weird to me, but let's move forward, is the source of Megaton's food. While it's very weak and vague, there's nothing seriously wrong with John's theory here. So this is apparently the part where we have to start pointing out that some of the parts of my video he's ignoring completely explain this away. First, I am correct about no one in town hunting or herding them. The town has no hunters at all. No one refers to this as being their job or hobby in any way. But worse than that, as explained in the video, Moira's survival guide quest sends you to a grocery store for food. There's absolutely zero mention of hunting in any way, shape, or form. And even worse than that, mole rats are a part of her quest, they are seen as a pest and a nuisance, and she wants you to test a repellent to make them go away. Fucking do it, dude. Quit teasing everyone with you putting the gun in your mouth. Just fucking pull the trigger and get the shit over with. They even have her, the obvious dumb joke idiot character, theorize that they can be domesticated for food. Keep in mind... Bruh, if they make a four-hour video on me, I'm not watching that shit. That if Megaton were... I don't care. I am not sitting through this shit. Holy fuck. A hunter haven? or even just traded with hunters, there would be stalls of animal carcasses and meat hanging out to dry so it could be preserved. Yes, raw meat by itself in the sun is bad, but using salt or other methods can preserve it for the future. The fact- <laughs> Obviously. Not a single butcher style shop or person exists in the town means they do not hunt for their food. Creed's count- <laughs> Duh. I mean, obviously, man. Counter will be in red. There's nothing to support John's claim. Dude, I live at, uh, what is it? 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. There you go. In here, no one hunts them. No one in town herds them. There isn't even a scrap of mole rat meat. Naturally, he can't quote you correctly and can't even spell correctly. What the fuck is mole wrapped meat? We already knew he had a very, very loose grasp on the English language, but this is getting pathetic. He knew enough to say the word rat, but still have my quote as wrapped. What the f- He probably used fucking speech to text, you dipshit. Fuck is ha Why are you so fucking obsessed with spelling? Oh wait, never mind. Never mind, I think we know the answer to that. I have A-U-T. Yeah, that's the answer. Happening here. If this is the caliber of my haters, then I either need to step my game up, or I'm pretty fucking safe from criticism. <laughs> this has nothing to do with John's theory of how Megaton gets its food. It fucking do, though. No one hunts. So who cares how big the fucking animals are if no one hunts them for food? 
The size of the animal being massive now has no direct correlation to food in Megaton because no one in Megaton hunts animals at all or even keeps them as herd animals. There is only a single fucking Brahmin in town. One animal does not... The Godfather of the Eight talk about the death of Kevin Conroy. Um, Kevin Conroy is dead. He died on 11-11-2022, the original release date for Starfield. May he rest in peace. Not a sustainable... There you go. ...herd make. So it's fine to say Kree is poisoning the well because of potential implications Vincent sees, but when Kree talks about the heavily implied statement John says about the mole rats being the town's food source, he claims it has nothing to do with John's argument and there is no implication. This guy is something else. Not just that, but Vincent is reframing John's statement to be a theory. It was never presented that way by John himself. He simply stated it as though it's a fact and simply moved on, as if that's all it took to debunk the criticism against Fallout 3. In reality, the food issue with Fallout 3 is so dire to the point of breaking the base level logic of the entire capital wastelands. Brit with the two, the faster we leave the internet, the better. I know, when the fuck are you picking me up, Brit? We need to get the fuck out of here. Surviving. To put it in simple terms, Humans need food to survive, so they need to eat various vegetables, fruits, and animals. Plants need sunlight and water to survive, yet there is no water. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty good eulogy as well, man. It really came from the heart. Water in the capital wasteland, allegedly by the game's own logic. And we see no living plants anywhere in the world. If there are no plants, then herbivores wouldn't exist. So carnivores could only hunt each other or humans for sustenance. Hunting carnivores themselves is not a stable food supply, nor does it add nutrition for many carnivore species. For example, cats, that need the meat of herbivores to create taurine, something essential for cats to even live. This is compounded- They should just drink some fucking Monster Energy, bro. Or some Red Bull. With needing to fight for your meal. Sure, you can do it, but how often are you going to be able to sustain those injuries from fighting with a fellow carnivore, and your prize is not some meal fat and meat- but built lean to be a predator. In essence, the ecosystem is completely fucked and would collapse within a year, if not sooner. You could say, in part, it really just takes John's example of the capital wastelands, massive wildlife, mole rats, and turns them into the primary focus for Creed. <sighs> Alright, listen here, you little shit. Mole rats were offered as an example by John as a food source. We know this is false because of Moira, but expanding on that, we have no butcher shops, no farms, no livestock besides a single Brahmin. Megaton cannot possibly be getting its food from hunting. Again, someone needs to be preparing all that meat for storage and for consumption. Keep in mind, none of the caravans we see outside are food merchants. Even if they were, there isn't enough towns in the wasteland that are shown to be growing crops or herding animals to sustain the rest of the <laughs> wasteland. At most, we get like two. Canterbury Commons has some Brahmin in a pen next to the town. and Yeah, obviously, bro. Some Brahmin fucking noodles? Hell yeah. Rivet City has a hydroponics lab where they grow crops. Neither of these are enough to sustain the rest of the wasteland. They barely have enough to feed themselves, let alone multiple towns. Worse than that, a town like Megaton would need daily deliveries of food to barely survive. All the caravans we see in the base game consist of one guard, one merchant, and one pack brahmin, which likely wouldn't be enough to carry the food a town like Megaton would need to survive. We typically give things like this a pass, because it's a video game, but for Fallout 3, the entire world fails to properly establish how everyone is staying alive when there's no water and as a result no food compounding the issue when that's a core aspect of this. Why are you even playing this fucking game, bro? This is the question we need to all ask. If this is literally so fucking bad to you, why do you even care? Like, if you can't suspend reality for four fucking seconds to play a video game, why the fuck are you even playing a video game in the first place? That's the better fucking question. Story. This is a straw man argument that didn't even need to be made. 
A straw man, sometimes written as straw man, is a form of argument and an informal fa <laughs> fallacy of having the impression Tell me of if you know someone. is said to be attacking a straw man. Seth, Seth, no. no. No, this isn't a fucking straw man in the slightest. Once again, Vincent conveniently ignores the rest of my video in order to make this point. So this entire section about food is about 20 minutes long in the actual video, where I cover all the bases, including why wildlife can't exist in the capital wasteland. He knows it's there, and chooses to ignore it. It is very clear in the video Oh my god. ...video that the argument goes far beyond the mole rats alone. He can't attack the arguments you make because he doesn't actually have a response to it. He just has to attack your character instead. You're poisoning the well. You're framing things negatively. He doesn't seem to have any actual counters to your arguments. Attacking my character? Uh, what's that called again? An ad hominem fallacy. Not to mention this mental genius has in fact himself just created a straw- How long did these fuckers like collaborate in order to make this video? Like, alright, you come in and chime in with the definition right now. Like, you just know, like, so much time and effort went into making this video, and it's still this fucking shitty. Straw man argument. He has distorted your argumentation from its original form so he can attack it. Obviously. What Creed should have done to disprove John's theory is to see if there was any meat of any type of wildlife that could be found in Megaton. So his argument here seems to be that because there's food in Megaton, that means they have food. This just skips any logical progression of how it might get there and simply assumes that must make sense. Somehow. That would have given John's theory the killing blow instead of him just hyper focusing on the mole rats. This might be speculation, but another reason Creed might have had to become fixated on the mole rats would be to add the unnecessary proof to his straw man and to insult the Pollyann head in the clouds of Inter archetype that Moyer Brown is using with this. So the three of us listen to this part several times, and when he says, Polly and head in the clouds, we have no fucking clue what he's trying to get across here. Like, I don't even know what he's saying for the Polly and part. We mentioned this on stream, and people in the chat had told us that what he tried to say was Polly. Dark Descendant with the two brain aneurysm is just playing on repeat for- Dude, this shit is fucking pathetic. It's just insane. And Brit with the two, it's probably one guy making up two other boys. Yeah, he's probably got fucking voices in either, this either, head. Either subscribe, donate, or Split get Split personality out. bullshit or something like that. AQ Honest with the 18 months? Spent more time scripting this than playing fall. Yeah, 100%. Although, who knows? <laughs> I don't think they have much going on in their life. Diana, which is a book from 1913 and a movie from 1960, which is about someone who is blindly optimistic. I don't know why you wouldn't just say blindly optimistic so everyone understands it, rather than making a reference player. to a movie that is over 60 years old that a lot of people are going to miss. Especially with how inept Vincent is at speaking the English language, because it genuinely came across as just him spewing more word salad like he does for the rest of the video. As to Moira's optimism, or as Vincent likes to call her, Moir, I wouldn't call it blindly optimistic. Just too stupid to comprehend the situation she's in, or the state of the world as a whole. Remember, this is a character who tells you to go play with landmines and take enough rads to get radiation sickness. This is not an intelligent person. As far as head in a Oh my god, bro. So where's Spark with the four months just got here? What the fuck is this? I got the answer for you, man. That's what's going on here. Cloud's inventor goes, that's also very clearly not what Moira is. John himself demonstrates this <laughs> with a line he gives as an example of a line he likes. 
where she says she stitched a smiley face into the back of your head to cheer you up, even though you can't see it. She's clearly a fucking moron. The game goes out of its way to make this clear repeatedly. Fuck, maybe you should move in with her and be among your kin, Vincent. More than that, though, he's insinuating that I didn't count all the other types of meat in town because that would prove John to be right. When it fucking doesn't. The presence of food does not explain how the food got there to begin with. Even if the town has tons either, of other either, animal either subscribe, food donate, products, or it get begs the, fuck the question, out. where is all of it coming from? Who is preparing all the food for storage and use? Hell, Moira even implies they are trying to just find food in supermarkets hundreds of years after the bombs fell. To give an example of how stupid <laughs> the situation is, imagine if a town in the desert had tons uh... and tons of water, but no wells, no oasis near them, absolutely no source of water, and arguing that because the town is shown to have water, that's good enough on its own. It is not. <laughs> she does briefly mention the idea of maybe domesticating them, for milk and meat, but that's just an idea she has, and nothing more. The very fact that she of all characters is presenting this idea too, it's probably meant to be taken as a joke, because she's a stupid character who commonly says stupid things. Personally, I think John's theory is pretty flawed. So, in the case of Megaton, the city has food because the one upside to the apocalypse is that wildlife is massive now. This is making the claim that the wildlife that is massive for the apocalypse, which is weird to me, but let's move forward, is the source of Megaton's food. While it's very weak and- For it with the five, to be honest, I'm sleepy and now my head hurts because of these three. Hopefully these donos make it worth it for you, Grub. Go to sleep, Brit. Save yourself at this point, honestly. But I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It definitely makes it much more fucking standable. I can't I, like, I really just cannot be- Well, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. There are people who devote their time to much worse shit. It's just- It really is amazing that these type of people do fucking exist, though. It's never, <laughs> it never ceases to fucking amaze me. Let's put it that way. Oscar Rodriguez with the two. This is lame. Um, I think the word you're looking for might be more along the lines of. And vague, there's nothing seriously wrong with John's theory here. Personally, I think John's theory is pretty flawed whoops accidentally counted yourself there why it's like as a kind of soldier with a thumb i'm very certain they don't look or look people in the eyes when they talk to anyone dude they don't leave their fucking house they have their mom go pick up fucking food and everything they have their mommies do their laundry and all sorts of shit or their uh public service worker or whatever the fuck in their home i don't know See here with the five, I argued about this against a British potato, and now I realize how much of a spat I was and would like to formally make an apology. Well, British potato, if you're watching this shit, hopefully you can find it in your heart to forgive him. He has seen the error in his ways. Logical that most residents of the capital wasteland must be sustained primarily on a meat diet that John is theorizing about. The residents of Megaton are in a unique position of being located at one of the major trade hubs in the Capital Wasteland. It's highly likely that they get a more diverse food stock from the traders for their diets than the average DC citizen in Fallout 3. Quick question, where do the traders get that food from? So once again, this is something I cover in autistic detail. Where the fuck do you get your food from? Because I know it's not the fucking grocery store. Does mommy go and pick it up for you? Does the social worker come by once a week to drop it off at the front door? On the original because that's what I want to know, man. Is that the caravan that you're talking about? Video. See, I take the time to go through nearly every town in the game, including all the major ones, to show what they have for crops and herded animals. Most <laughs> have little to nothing. It's pathetic. No town has crops besides Rivet City, and they make it clear they're done in a hydroponics lab and it comes across as experimental. As for herded animals, for most locations it ranges from none to two. Arfu is an exception with three or four. Canterbury Commons is an exception with three or four. 
We don't actually know if Canterbury uses them for food or not. See, Canterbury is the center of trade in the Dude, they really think that video games should be like a fucking one-to-one representation of real life. This shit is pathetic. Capital Wasteland. It's a hub for the traders, and they all use Brahmin. Tosino's pizza rolls and Capri Sun. <laughs> Yo, that's probably actually pretty fucking accurate. As pack animals. Is much more like that probably is what's on the menu most days capri sun and fucking pizza rolls likely that these brahmin we see are spares to be swapped out for brahmin that were just on the road even if we were to ignore that entirely it's like three or four brahmin and not enough to sustain canterbury alone let alone the entire fucking wasteland and really boiling miss brown down just to a stupid character is rather reductive she is the impossible optimist that can teach the player character a lot about the capital wasteland with a cheery tone of voice that doesn't match this area. Moira Brown is so stupid. How stupid is she? Moira Brown is so stupid she sent you to the supermarket to pick up a loaf of bread 200 years after the apocalypse. Moira Brown <laughs> is so stupid she wants you to repel a possible food source from town in the apocalypse. Moira Brown is so stupid, she asks you to step on a landmine and report your injuries. Moira Brown is so stupid, she wants you to get acute radiation sickness so she can document your skin bubbling off your bones. Moira Brown is so stupid, she stitched a fucking smiley face in the back of your head to make you feel better. It's not reductive to call her stupid when the game very clearly and repeatedly flags her as being a fucking idiot through her dialogue and interactions constantly. And maybe that's why Creed is hating on her. Her being an optimist is not the problem. There are hopeful characters all throughout Fallout lore and in the games. The issue is she is suicidally stupid. It is frankly a miracle she hasn't been the reason the Capital Wasteland rediscovered the teachings of Darwin. In fact, it is such a miracle she manages to survive a fucking nuke if you blow up Megaton. I also really like the implication that I hate her just because she's positive. Fuck you, Vincent. However- <laughs> I can't afford this shit! <laughs> Dude, he's actually fucking triggered. He's like, fuck you, Vincent. How fucking say- How fucking dare you say that about me? Oh my god, bro. This is like some fucking- I don't even know what level of fucking degeneracy this falls on the scale of. Will with the five just got back from Indian Wells, almost got rear-ended by a drunk in a pink Range Rover. Oh, shit. What a night. Also, what is this? I feel like I'm going to pass it. Oh, here. I can tell you what it is, man. ISM autism. That's pretty straightforward. In Mr. Caption's video, he raises a very good point. All the plant life in the Capital Wasteland is dead. Everything outside Whoa. of Oasis, that is, which is a recent development and hardly anyone knows about. So for the remainder of this section, I'll be omitting Oasis. I know recent is a relative concept, but that's why you should really give context to statements like this. Most people would not assume the last 20 to 30 years is recent after all. God, he's getting pedantic again. See, in John's video, there were small points like this that I ignored because it was pointless to go in on them. For example, with the Tenpenny Tower quest, he said you had to kill the four ghouls when there were only three. I, I did not correct this shit. because the mistake he made didn't change the substance of the argument in the slightest. But more than that, I'm not fucking wrong here. In the grand scheme of things, 20 to 30 years is recent when we're talking about a wasteland that has had no plant life for 200 fucking years. So, he speaks about this being relative, but also undermines his own point by saying most people, not everyone. So he knows there are some people that would inherently understand what is being said. Now, when presented with a concept like plant life returning to a nuclear wasteland, I would say it's very easily argued that most people would consider 20 to 30 years as a re Zero with the five, they all talk about mole rats, a mutated monster, basically, but complain about how Megaton gets food. And how it's not realistic, damn, like, it's just, 
And you really expect, like, Bethesda to build scaled farms. Like, okay, this farm could support 100 people, so we're going to make sure the farm is the exact size that could support the population. No, they're not going to fucking do that shit. It's a video game. Like, it's not real life. These dudes need to get a fucking life and stop looking to video games to fill that fucking void in their sad existence. Recent development in an apocalypse. The trees in Oasis are clearly fully grown as well. Or did you think the trees instantly sprout out of the ground at their full size in the first year? Now, ignoring the rest of the video we've covered so far, this does kind of strike me as proof that he's not actually listening to or considering the arguments being made at all. The reason I didn't elaborate was because basic common sense should have told you that 30 years is recent when you're talking about 200 years after the bombs dropped. 200 years of all vegetation being dead. That is, 3 twentieths or 15% of the time that has passed since the war. Not to mention, of those 20 to 30 years, the vast majority of that time would have been with tiny twigs slowly breaking the ground, growing very little year after year until finally being even remotely what we would call a tree after four years, which would have a trunk thickness of about your arm. In seven to ten years, some trees, like pecan trees, would finally begin producing their fruit to even try and reproduce, which is even giving the game the benefit of the doubt that these trees produce fruit slash nuts that are even human edible to begin with. So for the vast majority of Oasis's existence, it would have just been Harold with a couple of saplings near him. In essence, Oasis is far too developed for the short time span it is supposed to have been in existence. Now I want to bring back this line for a moment. And I want to examine this initial journey in detail, as it really demonstrates the level of care and craftsmanship that goes into Fallout 3's world design. Yeah, the world design for Fallout 3 is broken on nearly every level. <laughs> this is going to be a rather large tangent, oh, but it's- Jeez, dude, I just- I can't believe this is actually a fucking real video, dude. Honestly. It's just incredible. Well, with the two- it was a Rolls, not a Rover. Oh, shit. It might have been stolen. Oh, damn. I was about to say, if it wasn't stolen, you should have fucking uh, let it hit you. And then you could have gotten a new car. It's necessary in order to fully debunk John's point beyond a shadow of a doubt. And additionally, preemptively debunk responses in the comments. As the response to the mole rats as a food source is the one point I made in the original video that saw the biggest pushback from people who defend Fallout 3 or John. <laughs> because it was clearly a straw man argument against John's poorly thought out and phrased theory about how people of Megaton get their food. A straw man, sometimes written as straw man, is a form of argument and an informal fallacy of having the impression of refuting an argument, whereas the real subject of the argument was not addressed or refuted, but instead replaced with a false one. I mean, we've already proven this man doesn't know what a fucking straw man argument is. It's not a straw man yeah. to take the exact argument someone made and argue against it. Notice how he also constantly gives John the benefit of the doubt. Oh, it's just the theory he had. Well, it was never presented as such by John in the first place. But when it comes to anything I say, there is no such benefit of the doubt. This I wouldn't give it to you either. This actually seems like a good time to bring up another one of our interactions in the comments section. See? During a back and forth we had, he accused me of being dismissive of his arguments, as if he wasn't dismissing my arguments in the video, because he just didn't like them. Such as when he claimed there's no proof that it doesn't rain in Fallout 3, despite this being an indisputable fucking fact. In response, I had said that he had made it pretty clear he wasn't coming into this with good faith, that he was seeking to debunk the criticisms, to which he basically admitted. This is a really big deal Got for these him. kinds of videos. This is why John's video was so shit, and this is one of the many reasons why Vincent Martin's video is so shit. Because they both started with their conclusion. As in Kane nostalgia with the two, I blew Johnny Walker. Oh shit, man. Did it feel good though? He was a Scotchman. <laughs> Jesus. Zier with the two, this makes me want to change my profile pic. All right. Nah, don't do it, man. Don't let these fucking degenerates ruin the shit you like. Conclusion. You can't let it them fucking take this shit from you. These people have nothing going for them in life. No one loves them, not even their fucking parents. And had to twist, distort, misrepresent, contrive, and bullshit their way through all the inconvenient facts to prove the ultimate point they're both trying to make. You can't give these fucking degenerates an inch. 
because they'll just take a fucking mile. Vincent Martin didn't come into my video with any good faith or any intention of listening to what I had to say and checking for himself if it was true or not. He is looking to undermine and destroy, to debunk, by any disingenuous means, any criticism he doesn't like against a game he likes. Yeah, that seems to be his entire point behind all of this. When I posted my Not comment him. in response to his video, in which I went very into detail about what he was getting wrong and why, his response to me was to basically ignore most of what I said and just hand wave everything else away. Rather than actually trying to counter anything or have a real discussion, he claimed I was dismissive in my comment, even though the whole reason my comment was as long as it was is because I was fully taking him seriously at that point. However, him and one of his staunch defenders seemed to take more issue with the fact that I was commenting rather than you, Cree. Like, they expected you to be the one making a comment, and the fact I was making one of my own volition is proof of you being a coward somehow. It's like no one else is allowed to have autonomy and do things because they want to. They both completely dismissed my criticism because I wasn't the person they wanted me to be. It showed me they really weren't <laughs> interested in arguing in good faith. They just want- Dude, you're a fucking brony. Dude, you're a fucking brony. No one owes you a good faith argument. You literally have a fucking profile picture art of you as a brony sipping a fucking cup of tea with a fucking tramp stamp on with a leather jacket. You have no right to a genuine argument. The only thing people should fucking do when it comes to you is point and laugh. That's it. I want to blindly defend Fallout 3. Doesn't help Vincent then made a video in response to my comment literally titled Pagan's Bad Faith. Right out of the gate framing me as some bad faith actor. When up to that point I had been completely genuine and as polite as possible. Oh yeah, Sacred G. This is another fucking weirdo who came into my comment section with shit disingenuous arguments and got mad when I didn't fold immediately and accused me of not being able to handle criticism because I didn't fold for his terrible arguments. Sacred G likes to suck the nuts of anyone who dislikes me. When he heard Acerthorn had a feud with me, he immediately jumped to his side. At least until he realized how much of a scumbag Acerthorn is, then he distanced himself pretty quick. It's no surprise- British Potato with the 10 to give them some credit here. Vincent Martin is a moron. I've had to deal with the guy a few times. He makes really bizarre claims. Once he said, I manipulate people by using game footage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a single intelligent entity in this entire fucking debate that I'm watching unfold right now. So, yes, in the fairness to these three, very special special and that i mentioned special individuals the guy they're arguing with i'm sure is just as special as they are but yeah i can 100 percent see that shit man this is a side of the internet that i always knew existed but never really wanted to fucking watch but here we are i say he's latched on to vincent martin like a fucking lamprey honestly with the way these two are acting it's coming across as really obsessive and weird hell Vincent Martin even outed himself as hate-watching our podcast. Or maybe it's just attention-seeking and wanted us to cover him on the one-year anniversary stream and was mad that we didn't. In essence, when dealing with these two weirdos, keep the receipts so you can laugh at the clowns who got out-robusted by the local Wizard Federation delegate. Can you hear the mad honking from the clown closet? All of the plant life in the Capital Wastelands is dead. They're either burned trees or dead grass. Here Creed expands on Mr. Caption's argument even further. Without presenting any evidence to support it, of course, I've already confirmed in the last video that the uh, all the plant life is dead theory is just something Mr. Caption thought up with really nothing to back it up with. No evidence? What the fuck do you think the visual footage in the background is showing off all the dead trees and grass? Do you not have eyes? Yeah, man. To explain why he has Outer Worlds footage in the video instead of Fallout 3, blind and retarded is a dangerous combination. In Space Station 13, that is. So because this- Are you speaking from fucking experience, my guy? That is the question we need the answer to.
<laughs> Are you speaking from fucking experience on that one? Because I have an inkling that you might fucking be. It's a very basic observation as miles above Vincent's ability. I'll explain it slowly for him. The trees are all very clearly burned and don't have leaves. All the grass shit. and other plant matter is brown and dead. No one in the entire capital wasteland is growing any kind of food outside of one hydroponics lab on a ship. There is no wild fruits or vegetables growing of any kind anywhere. Grass can go into a dormant state, in which it could survive about six months, with a little to no nutrient sunlight or water. More than six months have passed since the bombs dropped. In fact, it's been about 2,400 months since the bombs have dropped. Additionally, it does not rain in the capital wasteland. At all. <laughs> Ever. As evidenced by the game. This is something he tried to argue against in the comments with the most pathetic line I've ever seen. That it was engine limitations. But that rings a bit fucking hollow when Morrowind on the original Xbox was able to do this. And both Oblivion and Skyrim on the 360 were able to do this. And New Vegas had rain in an expansion. Even if the grass was still somehow alive but dormant, it still wouldn't be a sustainable food source for animals. It loses the nutrients required to sustain other creatures. Duh. It's why when grass goes dormant in grazing fields, farmers have to supplement their livestock's diet with other vitamins and grains, <laughs> or they would all eventually die. <laughs> the grass being dormant for 200 years isn't oh. a defense. It wouldn't make the issue any less of a problem. Oh my god. This is just incredible, man. Brit with the two, you knew about these people. This is all new to... I mean, I didn't know that these particular people existed. But I knew people like them existed. If that makes sense, Brit. This is just incredible. Absolutely fucking incredible. And Z here with the two just to derail the lives. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. We need some derailing at this point. Also notice how he changes the pitch in my voice here to make me sound stupid. <laughs> you don't have to change the fucking pitch in anyone's voice for that shit to be accomplished. This isn't sped up at all. It's literally just a pitch shift. God, it's like someone's unattended retarded child is messing with the computer. Dog, you are literally describing yourself right fucking now. SK nostalgia with the two of these guys enlightening me, like Plato. Holy shit. They probably should take the advice of Socrates, though, because I have a feeling they've got some cheese pizza habits. Vincent has to edit your sound to make you sound dumb. Meanwhile, all we have to do is show his video for the same effect. But oh, got it, bro. Fucking destroyed. Holy shit. <laughs> Dude, fucking roasted. Defenses for this particular point in the comments have been nothing short of absurd. Some people have claimed it doesn't- We're almost at 58 minutes. ...doesn't matter, which isn't even an argument. Some people have claimed that the plants are totally alive, they just don't look like it, which isn't even worthy of response. And one guy pointed out that there's three living flowers in Arlington Cemetery, which I didn't even bother to confirm. I really don't know how Creed can be so smug when dealing with the evidence that can be found right there in the game world to support the fact that the plants are alive in Fallout 3. Poisoning the well. 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 Alright, we're at 28, or fucking 48 minutes. Or fuck. Damn, now I'm fucking retarded, guys. I caught it. It's contagious. I caught the, uh, as the kids like to say. But anyway, we're at 58 minutes. We have passed the finish line. We can end this fucking miserable <laughs> fucking experience <laughs> of this shit. Oh my god. Dear god, dude. How people sit through this unironically amazes me. But anyway, dude, I feel like we need to play the fucking Brit. I feel like we need to play the song from Gladiator. Now we're free. Like shit. That's the vibe. <laughs> I can't afford this shit. What's that shit? Let me see if I can play the scene real quick. Can I watch it? Probably 
probably not. I don't know. Ending scene. Oh, I'm already getting the copyright warning. But now we're free, guys. Holy shit. All right, well, let's go from a set of retards to one retard just as a quick little fucking <laughs> palate cleanser. Holy shit, man. All right. Here we go. So. Oh my god. Carriage of the Caribbean music starts. Yeah, Gladiator is a fucking goaded movie, man. I love that movie so much. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Level 1 Podcast, where we're busy... SNK Nostalgia with a 2, the scene saved chat's life, and honestly, shit. You should definitely watch Gladiator, man. If you haven't seen that shit, you should watch it. Down where we're what? We're busy having fun down here on Level 1. I jumped ahead of myself. And I also forgot to turn on the Pac-Man Ghost. I'm back. After my day off yesterday, and this is going to be a very, very exciting stream... Make sure to watch the extended version of Gladiator. It's a lot better. ...week for all of us. Oh, um, man. What a, what a week we've got. Although, admittedly, this week is a shorter streaming week for me. Normally, I'd be here streaming six days. Six days a week. I'm live streaming here to pay my bills. Uh-oh. And I'd be through Wednesday, and then Thursday would be my day off. This coming week, I'm only streaming five days. Oh, he's getting lazy. You generation with the two opinion on Tears of the Sun. I haven't seen that movie yet. Maybe I'll watch it at some point, but I haven't watched it. And then my day off is this coming Wednesday. <clears throat> the week after, I'll be streaming six days, and my day off will be Wednesday again. What is this? Because that way my day off aligns with the day before Thanksgiving, because I can't Tears have Thanksgiving of off because I already have some planned for that day. We'll talk about all that in a moment, okay? <clears throat> oh my God, do we need to talk about Twitter? Because this is something that is going yeah, to directly affect this. PSP Gaming and this and this business. Did I participate in Small Business Saturday? I am Small Business Saturday. I am a small business. So, I am the small business on Small Business Saturday. I'm working. <laughs> He's no, a small business? Small I am the Yo, what the fuck are you selling, bro? Other than lies and fucking bullshit. Small business. You guys who contributed today, you contributed to Small Business Saturday. <laughs> Yo, can you guys contribute to my small business Saturday? It's Saturday for me. You know, I need that money. Way that I directly communicate with you guys on a daily basis, and that it's not looking big. good. It's looking like this business is actually going to go out of business, which is really stupid. Someone bought it for a record number mm. of, uh, amount of dollars, and now it's going to go out of business. Yeah, that's how business works. Um, <laughs> all right. I DSP the businessman. That engagement because. Blade Runner's great. Yeah, Blade Runner's really good. I like 2049 better, though, than the original. We had a lot of engagement earlier this year, and then it all died over the summer when I was doing downtime projects, oh and there's God. not much you can do about that. But now that I'm playing the new game... Yeah, dude, he's a humble merchant on the internet. We need to help our boy out. Games. <clears throat> Liking videos and leaving comments are absolutely going to help this channel again. All right? In fact... In fact, Mr. Papavera... There's only one real... And it's not really a negative, it's a little bit more of a disappointment when it came to Wednesday. And that is, I didn't gain any new subscribers at all. Zero. And you oh my god. It. So, tough shit. Alright? <laughs> that sucks. Guess he didn't ban enough people. Brand new game, you would have hoped that that game would bring new people to your channel. But let's be honest Why here. would it? Why would it? Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> exactly. You're not doing anything special. You don't even put in any fucking effort. Like, you can't even upload your playthroughs in the proper order. When everyone played the fucking game early, as we already talked about, right? People had this game for two weeks early because they all begged for it from fucking Sony. They all got it. Then they all had their playthroughs up and their streams up a day early. So if anyone wanted to see this stuff right away, they went to them, right? So initially what that leaves is my dedicated fan base and viewer base who wanted to see me play it, but no newcomers. So it's not shocking. Wow, whatever. And I hate to say it, this is the difference in the industry now. Is that 
when you have everyone who's a content creator basically begging for early release codes, getting them, and then basically getting advanced access to everything early, what you get is a select group of elites. You don't get the same equal footing for everyone anymore. And what happens is they will always prosper because they're in it for this. Anything for this, right? That's While right. The rest of us who are normal people are like, well, I guess it is what it is. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to become one of them. I yeah, Phil is a humble content merchant. I'm a humble card merchant. Fuse? But yeah. This is a, why don't you just change your entire formula completely for what you did that was successful all along? Because I'm not an asshole. I'm you consider the state that you're in right now a success. That is very interesting. Wow. That really is interesting. I'm not a sellout. I'm not a shill. I'm not a fucking moron who constantly changes what they want to do for the sake of making a buck. That's why. What a <laughs> dumb fucking thing to say. Seriously. Unbelievable. It's people still to this day say stupid shit like that. Why did you just completely change everything you ever did? Stupid. So all I can say is, for those of you who did watch, thank you so much. You guys were a great audience. You supported. That's all I care about. As I told you guys, I have absolutely no aspirations whatsoever to become some giant streamer or whatever. I tell everyone I wouldn't want to be a giant streamer. I wouldn't want to be a streamer where I can't I can't have a conversation with a viewer because the chat's going, and there's so much crap in it, you know? So I, I enjoy the level of, of popularity that I have. I'm happy with, who, with the viewer base I have. Um, <clears throat> you know, seriously, uh, thanks. Thanks so much. It is what it is. You know, I, you know, I everyone's like, oh, Phil's going to get a big spike. Shit. I told you, I, I didn't think so. I didn't think I was going to get any kind of a giant spike in attention or viewership this time of year just for these very reasons. You know, the industry has changed dramatically from when I used to be popular back in the day and everyone. That's right. Games day one. It's very different now, you know. Very different. So all that being said, it doesn't really matter to me. But it is what it is because some people were expecting growth. There was zero growth. What are you going <laughs> to do? I enjoy the game so far. I even did a highlight on my day off. It was the God of War Ragnarok Jingle Bells musical special. Where in the first few minutes of the game, I started singing my version of Jingle Bells. And somehow the wolves in the game were musically attuned to what I was singing. I did not intend that. It just happened <laughs> randomly. So I made a pretty cool uh, oh short of it. Oh, my God. You know, it got about 1,000 views. It's my core audience. Like I told you guys, shorts do not actually appeal to the mainstream like people think they do. They don't. All right? The only way a short Gee, will appeal to the mainstream why. is exactly the same way that a short or a video appeals to the mainstream. Has to check off every box. Has to be drama. Has to have clickbait title. Has to have all the bullshit that everyone does on YouTube for videos. That's how shorts get noticed on YouTube as well. And you guys know I'm not going to do that. I, you know, that's not me. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, Kratos is nude. And you click on it, and it's him singing Jingle Bells. You know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> this is with these idiots with their drama videos. Oh, the worst person on earth. And you click on it, and it's just some annoying person complaining on Twitter. Oh, wow, that was really a, a very valid title for your fucking YouTube short that got 5 million views today, right? What I would say is, guys, if you want to help out directly right now with the cost of all these games coming out, you absolutely can. It's very simple. You can email. Griffin sells $2 tops cards. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm a humble merchant, man. My wares are not expensive. Abel with the two just woke up for work. Surprised you're streaming. Oh my god. You dodged a fucking bullet, man. That's all I can say. Oski Boski with the two. Thank God. Real entertainment. DSP never disappoints. He really doesn't, man. He's the most consistently entertaining motherfucker in the drama sphere of YouTube. And SNK nostalgia with the two. When DSP leaves, the internet will be boring again. Yeah. Honestly, man, it will be. Tell me at darksidephilahotmail.com. And you can include a code for digital credits for any of the networks. So, for example, The Devil in Me, I could play either on PlayStation Network or yeah, the dog on Xbox me. Live. It doesn't really matter if I play it on my PS5 or my Xbox Series X. So, credits for either would help right now to afford the game. Yeah. Um, I think Evil hint, West hint. is cross-platform as well. So, that doesn't matter. Yeah, that would help. Nintendo Network credits, your Nintendo Store would help for Pokemon. Um... I think Callisto Protocol also is cross-platform, right? Like, most of these games these days are all cross-platform now. So it doesn't really matter um, in that regard. If you just wanted to help, 
You can email me and shoot me a code for any of the digital credits for any network. That would really help to defray the cost of this ridiculous amount of games coming out. By the way, December doesn't even slow down. You got Midnight Suns, Callisto Protocol, Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core Reunion, and all this stuff. Like, geez. <clears throat> and, of course, I should direct our attention to our goal right here of 1,025 members that we're trying to hit by the end of the month. And if we hit that at any point during the month of November, we're unlocking the Christmas Marathon. Holly Ooh. Jolly Christmas Day. Oh my god. This is something I do annually and you guys really seem to enjoy. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do all year. Number one, I dress up in holiday attire. <laughs> How exciting. Christmas sweaters, t-shirts, various holiday themed hats. It's a really special time of the year. That's number one. Number two, it's the only time of the year that I drink. Griffin is a Khajiit. Dude, are you calling me a pussy? Fuck you, man. On my stream. I actually have liquor like, like, fuck you, bro. It's actually Midnight Mobile with a two. I hope God of War Ragnarok comes to on PC soon. So does Ghost of Tsushima. Well, it sounds like an, a year on average is what we're going to have to wait. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Pure green alcohol I keep in here. You guys don't realize. You think it's a Mountain Dew Kickstarter. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Excuse me. Like flavored whiskeys, uh, you know, uh, eggnog, all kinds of stuff. You hear this, guys? That's the sound of my humble trading card sales. Please support me on Small Business Saturday. Oh my god, he's drinking gin. <laughs> Someone has tipped me a dollar ninety-five says, Be careful how I pay tribute to people on my stream, because when I tried to trip pay tribute to Kobe, it backfired. No, it didn't. This blows. Today's just a bad day. Kobe Bryant passes away in a tragic helicopter crash. My slaves get corrupted and deleted from friggin' nights. What else could happen? I hope nothing else. I hope that's it. Seriously. <laughs> That's gotta be it, man. We gotta cheer up. We gotta have a good day. This is not good. Bruh. We gotta have better than this, dude. Yeah, dude. It's gotta get better. It's got to. Ugh. I'm insensitive? How am I insensitive? What? <laughs> I'm upset because horrible things are happening today. Obviously, Kobe Bryant passing away is way more horrible than me losing my game save. <laughs> what the fuck? No tell to the chatting. I'm not going to compare him to losing game saves, just like I didn't do that with Kobe. But since you're a brain-dead, mouth-drooling, sheep idiot, you wouldn't know that because you weren't on the fucking stream. Instead, you just suck on the butt of idiots who talk shit about me. So enjoy that butt-sucking, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro. He thinks he sounds so tough. It's sad. It's idiots. It's saying dumb shit. There's not me backfire. It doesn't backfire for me. And by the way, if anyone who listened to that shit years ago, you're a moron too. You know? Like, <laughs> First of all, you're referencing something almost three years old. It's laughably bad what you're saying. But the things that people said about me were completely taken out of context. Uh, yeah, dude. To make it sound bad when it wasn't the context that it was in. And you're an idiot. So I'm also going to say fuck you and I'm not going to count your nonsense either. These drama queens want to do shit today. Another troll? Wow. It's like the trolls are out in force today trying to do dollar tips, and they think I'm going to read them when I'm not. I've already announced this. I guess you guys weren't around for last week. Should I Should I, uh, Should I? I reiterate what I said last week publicly? Please. That way people stop wasting their time. So I said this last week, and I guess people didn't listen. I'm not going to read these troll tips anymore. Like, I don't, I'm not going to waste my time taking bait and answering dumb shit. If I see a tip that's something incredibly dumb, I'm just ignoring it. There's no point in me wasting my time. Um... You know what I'm saying? It, I don't care. I don't care about your opinions when you're so stupid. Like, this is like, you know, someone on the street, and they're walking down the street. <laughs> I, all right, forget it. I mean, <laughs> the, the thing is, I would make an analogy, but the analogy oh would God. also they would go over their head. They wouldn't understand it. So there's no point in even wasting my time, because I was actually That's making right, an analogy. And I was thinking about, I was like, wait a minute. If these people are already stupid, they're not going to understand it anyway. So why am I going to make this comparison? I don't need to. There you go. So there you go. I'm just saving myself the effort. Uh, no, I'm not wasting my time on your troll tips. So congratulations on wasting your time, but... No. Fuck no. Say to me another $3. He says, why are you jumping on the Elon, anti-Elon bandwagon? I can guarantee you Twitter will still be around. Well, first of all, I'm not jumping on a bandwagon. I'm just making factual observations. Like, you understand what the things I'm saying are true facts, right? Like, all these things really happen. Like, right now, Twitter is in incredible legal trouble 
because if one person who works there makes a pro does something illegal, there's no one to stop them because they have no real legal team checking anything. You know that, right? Like, they could literally be sued into oblivion. They're already facing multiple employment lawsuits. They're being, they could be sued into oblivion. They could be shut down by the SEC, the FTC. There's a million different companies that could shut them down or, or regulatory bodies that could shut them down right now. The, the, all the heads are quitting. They don't want to be there anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't make any of this up. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm factually reporting things. And you're saying that's, I'm jumping on the hate bandwagon. No, I'm not. I'm factually reporting things. Facts cannot be hateful or toxic. Facts are facts. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, talk about ultimate hypocrite, hypocrisy. That's the, the core, that's, that's the definition of hypocrisy. DSP has some pretty good experience with the definition of hypocrisy. So what was this other one? Let's watch this real quick. Phil says he doesn't want any small contributions. He's not grateful for those. He only wants $100 tips or larger. So, wow, what an ungrateful, greedy piece of garbage. And, you know... Pirates of the Caribbean music start. Welcome to the Level 1 Podcast, where we're busy having fun down here on Level 1, and today is a ginormously huge new release day, because ladies and gentlemen, today is the release day of God of War Ragnarok. <clears throat> <laughs> so <laughs> let's start on the youtube side of things this morning on the youtube side of things our first contribution was from rich from a view tech usa who has this real habit oh of, my god I've made abundantly clear that i want nothing to do with him he still talks about me he still slanders me he still makes shit up about me on his streams. He talks out of his ass about me. And then he comes here this morning about 40 minutes ago when I was not even here sitting at the laptop. And he does a super chat. Truth is, I probably would have just banned him on site if I saw him. But uh, I, he already scrolled off the screen many, many, many you know minutes ago. I don't have the ability to do that. But, uh, you know, he doesn't get the message. He wants to make drama. He's not going to get it here. You know, I don't give a shit about this guy. Drama. That's right. He cheered again. He goes, it was the head of the FTC that said in a press conference, they're going to fine you $42,000. Stop it. Why are people such fucking drama queens? <laughs> All right. Lysifer Soul. Says the one who acts like he's about to lose his fucking house every other day, man. That's pretty fucking ironic. Jesus Christ. Dude, DSP pleads like he's about to go fucking homeless on a daily basis and now is like calling out other people for being drama queens. Has become a channel oh, member God. this morning. Thank you, Lysifer Soul, for the membership and the support. Ryan Wilson, re-upped his membership in four months as you're one of the best streamers on YouTube, Phil. <laughs> uh, Jason Sipple, re-upped his membership for a year and says, liking the new Phil, good luck with God of War. I don't know what you mean by the new Phil, unless you haven't been around for a very long time, and then you came back and you realized, wow, this is definitely feels very different today than he was 10 years ago. That I can understand. <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. Click on it. Oh. Good, now I'm away from that annoying fucking bitch of a kid who I would have slapped in real fucking life if they talked to me like that. Jesus I would have fucking pimp slapped that shit out of that <laughs> What the fuck? Anyway. I love that clip. Did a super chat says, Jesus I'll give $100 Christ, if you play man. and finish. Give me God of War mode. No. Actually, it's fun. a funny story. When God of War 2018 came out, all right, I played it on the regular difficulty. Okay. So did, so did Cat. Um, we decided at the time that we wanted to watch someone else play it as well. So we started watching someone else play it. They SNK nostalgia with the two DSP holds his own soul hostage. It's definitely behind a fucking tip skull. That's for fucking sure. He decided to do it on the harder difficulty. Like they, they thought, oh, this is like going to be, this is going to, I guess, prove that I'm good at games or whatever. It really made their playthrough worse. Like no exaggeration. They had never, they hadn't played the game first at all. This was their first run through the game. And they were playing it, and it just significantly made the playthrough worse. Like, normal enemies that you're just supposed to coast through ended up becoming ridiculously difficult, tedious, and just over-the-top annoying. There were boss fights that in the main game, playing on the regular difficulty, were very fun. And for this person playing, 
they were nothing but a chore, like insane levels of annoyance. Uh, it got so bad, the person actually decided not to do the Valkyrie fights because the Valkyrie fights were so hard on the tougher difficulty, they skipped them. Now look at my playthrough. Me! Me! Because I played on standard difficulty, I went out of my way, I did every Valkyrie fight, and they were very challenging at the end, but it was worth it, you see? I'm not going to be stupid and ruin my yeah, playthrough right. for the reason of saying, oh, look, uh, me, I have a big E-penis, and, uh, you know, I'm such a big, strong gamer. Yeah, I'm a gamer! <laughs> because I took on the harder difficulty. <laughs> Listen, there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing the game on a harder difficulty, but I really feel like that's a, that's a, a, a second or third run goal. You want to experience the game at the default levels with the game developers intended you to play it at first. Then if you want to go back and do a second run and really challenge yourself and go for these uh, alternate uh, achievements and goals or whatever it may be, then you do that. I don't understand why anyone in their right mind would pick a high profile new release and say, I just want to play it on the harder difficulty first. Like, to gain attention? Yeah, like right here. People might want an incentive other than to watch a normal gameplay you can find all over you. Yeah, exactly. 100 you're doing something different from everybody else streaming the game. People love to watch people fucking rage. 100%. Who are you proving anything to? Yourself? Are you, do you really have such lacking of self-confidence in yourself that you feel you have to play it at a harder difficulty to start? Like, what's wrong with you? Where, where's your shortcomings in your head that you just can't enjoy a game at face value, but you have to, like, all of a sudden prove your metal, right? That doesn't... Because you claim you're a professional gamer, dumbass. Doesn't make any sense to me. It's really confusing <laughs> that people have this weird mentality, okay? Um, it is what it is. I'm playing it on the standard difficulty. We swap over to tips. Our first tip of the day is an $8 tip from Radical Jaws. They want me to ask the magic eight ball a question. Let's let's ask the eight ball the question first, then we'll do the animation and everything. So, if I eat a Taco Bell meal, will I get liquid dynamite coming out of my behind? By the way, I love your content. Have a great day, Phil. So, he wants to know, Radical Jaws wants to know, if he eats Taco Bell, will he then be taking a very wet and slippery ride down the Hershey Highway? Let's find out. <laughs> Tumblr. Cool. <Ready>? Bruh. <laughs> My sources say no. The sources say no, apparently. You'll get lucky. Or maybe you have a, a stronger guts than most of us. That's Usually right. Taco Bell, for the, at the very least, results in a lot of gas, in my opinion. That's right. Our second tip of the day. His expert opinion. Is a $5 tip that I received from Brock. He says, Fimble winter's upon us, boys. The winter to end all winters. I can feel it in my scroll. <laughs> That was a terrible Brock impression, wasn't it? I received a dollar tip from the great Piggly Wiggly saying, what would Rich from you Take USA need to do for the two of you to make up? I feel like he's a silly but good guy. He can't do it. I've already explained this a lot of times. And by the way, I'm not going to take debate and talk about this all morning. The, here's what I really don't like about Rich. He does whatever he can do for personal gain and doesn't care about the repercussions of anyone around him. All right? I used to be exactly like that. When I started as a content creator... I was the kind of person I would say and do whatever. As long as it got me content for the day and it got me views or whatever on YouTube, I didn't give a shit. There was entire rants I went on about games like Minecraft. I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. I didn't care because it got me clickbait views, so who cares, right? You're still popular. That's rich on a daily basis. Just the other day, I talked about it on the podcast. He misrepresented something that I said on the show. One morning, someone had been tipping less than a dollar, okay? And I explained to the audience... We've been down this road five years ago. When I first started becoming a full-time streamer, we had people who were trying to do very small microtransaction contributions in an attempt to troll the stream. They would Phil loves his microtransactions. The minute, and then they would expect me to constantly be shouting them out with these innocuous little messages that had nothing to do with anything. They were trying to get the pop-ups to constantly pop up. Then they started using troll names. So when you enable that behavior, all you're going to do is open up your stream to further trolling. And at that time, over five years ago, I talked directly with my live audience, and we came to a determination. It should be a dollar, whether it was it was bits back then, it was a hundred bits, whether it was, uh, you know, a dollar tip. It should be a dollar. Should be the threshold. If someone contributes a dollar, you shout it out, you give them some attention, you say thanks. If not, then you don't bother with it because that's how you're going to control your stream. If you don't do that, it's just you're just opening yourself up to constant 
trolling, harassment, and derailment, and you don't want that. People want a stream that has content, not just me talking to trolls all day, right? This is something we collectively agreed on over five years ago. No one's had an issue with it, okay? So it was a very rare thing that I get a tip that was lower than a dollar regardless. I made it abundantly clear on my stream why we had this rule in place, and we moved on, and no one had an issue. How does Rich cover it? Phil says he doesn't want any small contributions. He's not grateful for those. He only wants $100 tips or larger. So, wow, what an ungrateful, greedy piece of garbage. And, you know, this is what I mean. This is it's bullshit. It's, it's blatant misrepresentation. This is what he does all the time. This is the kind of person he is. Why do you do it? Because he has no content. The man has no content. Look at what he does on his channel. He has no content. All he can do is talk about drama and news and nonsense around him because he has no meaningful content for anyone. So that's what he does all day. I don't like that. I don't support that. I want nothing to do with that. So is he going to change from Phil being a guy is who makes above drama it, content man. And, and any day can make shit up at my expense to get views for his channel? No. Therefore, there's literally nothing Rich could ever do to become a better person and actually uh, make me not dislike him. All right? So, I mean, maybe if he completely never mentioned me ever again, but even if that's the case, I still don't like the kind of content he puts out because it's harmful. It's derogatory. It's fucking stupid. It's for dunces. And, you know, he, he could do better. He just doesn't want to. He has no desire to do anything better because all he cares about is this. All he cares about is this. Yeah, that's pretty ironic, Phil. Pretty sure that's all you care about as well. And then, or as in getting nostalgia with the two, the way DSP bleeds out money, I hope it's an eight ball. It, I mean, he has an addiction, but unfortunately it's gambling, not fucking coke. Anything for this, right? Rather than what he's actually putting out there on the internet. So, I don't like the guy, I want nothing to do with him. Okay. Think of it this way. Imagine if I ran a restaurant, and a reporter walks into my restaurant and says, Oh, would you be on my show, or would you let me interview you for the show right now, drop everything you're doing? No! I'm in the middle of work. I mean, what the fuck are you doing? If you want to, write me an email, you know, send me a letter, call me, let me a voicemail, do something officially to ask for something. Don't just fucking interrupt what I'm doing and say I'm gonna drop everything for you. What the fuck's your problem? That's right, man. But again, it takes common sense. A lot of people don't have that, especially the drama queens don't have common sense, so I'm not surprised. We can't all be blessed like the SP guys. But I'm going to go ahead and hop off, everybody. It is 5.04 for me, so I'm going to go to sleep. Have a wonderful Saturday, everyone, and a great weekend. I will talk to you all later, and peace out, guys.